I'm State Representative Seth Grove. I'm currently the interim chair for the State Government Committee and the chairman of the Government Oversight Committee. In these capacities, I've been asked to review the 2020 election, mind you, with nine business days before Thanksgiving and the end of session when our standing committees turn into pumpkins. To date, we have passed House Resolution 1100, sponsored by Representative Jesse Topper, to direct the Legislative Budget and Finance Committee to conduct risk-limiting audits on the ballots in all 67 counties, and reestablish the Act 35 data report. I don't think that's the COVID tracker. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Uh, the committee has, ha has sent extensive questions to the Department of State and are currently in the process of sending extensive questions to all 67 counties, election boards, to ascertain how they administered the 2020 elections and what issues they faced. Dominion voting systems, ImageCast X and ImageCast Precinct Scanner are used in the following 14 counties. Armstrong, Bedford, Carbon, Clarion, Crawford, Erie, Fayette, Fayette, Fulton, Jefferson, Luzerne, Montgomery, Pike, Warren, and my home county of York. This represents 1.3 million people who voted in the 2020 general election, or 19% of the total vote. Dominion Voting Systems has received millions in taxpayer dollars to provide voting systems to Pennsylvania. As you're tuning in today, you're probably wondering why you're not viewing a policy hearing. The committee scheduled a public hearing with Dominion Voting Systems to be held now. The members of the State Government Committee were looking forward to publicly addressing the plethora of accusations of Dominion Voting Systems in a format which would have allowed open and honest dialogue. I was impressed at what appeared to be the willingness of Dominion Voting Systems to address accusations and it, put the, and it would have put 1.3 million Pennsylvanians who use their machines at ease, including myself. Thinking Dominion was willing to publicly back up their product, which Pennsylvania taxpayers invested millions to purchase and voters entrusted with their sacred ballots, was truly remarkable. I truly felt Pennsylvanians and the nation could get some answers into the truth of the effectiveness of Dominion voting systems. Unfortunately, last evening, Dominion voting systems lawyered up and backed out of their commitment to the people of Pennsylvania to provide their input in a public format and discuss their voting systems of which 1.3 Pennsylvanians entrusted. Instead of running towards a light of honesty and integrity, Dominion voting systems retreated to the darkness. Why? Why would a vendor of public goods fear discussing their products sold to the public for the public good? If Dominion's products were successful and operated as they were supposed to, why wouldn't Dominion take the opportunity to publicly review its success? How hard is it to say, our ballot machines worked exactly as promised, and they are 100% accurate. Why, after weeks of accusations, has Dominion Voting Systems not released any analysis of the success of their voting machines to the public in order to stop their accusers in their tracks? If they have nothing to hide, why are they hiding from us? Today, I am saddened to report to the taxpayers of Pennsylvania and the 1.3 million voters who trusted Dominion Voting Systems with their ballots, that Dominion Voting Systems has hung you out to dry and slapped you in your faces. Not only are Pennsylvanians more skeptical, but the actions of Dominion Voting Systems last night have led credibility to their accusers' accusations. accusations. To date, the Secretary of State has initiated no plan to address any concerns of Pennsylvanians. A concerning number of Pennsylvanians have lost faith in the integrity of our election process, the elections were conducted above board, the Secretary of State and the Department would be falling over themselves to verify the results and put to rest the mistrust of this election. Trust must be earned. It is up to Dominion voting systems to earn the voters' trust. It is up to the Secretary of State to invalidate any rumor or accusation. I would like to call on Representative Don Kiefer to review some of the accusations against Dominion voting systems that we could have had answers to today, but will continue to process throughout rumor mills across the Commonwealth and across the United States. Representative. Good morning. Thank you, Chairman Grove. So um, I, I won't reiterate the counties, but 14 counties, mine being one of them in York County, utilize the Dominion software. And Pennsylvanians deserve to know exactly how Domin 
Dominion systems worked, as well as what software was utilized in our election pro process, and the security measures that they had in place so that we can give voters the confidence on the election outcomes. Most of us would agree here that we trust the workers in our polling places, and we trust the workers in our counties. There are neighbors and there are people that we elected. Uh, but what we don't know, and therefore we can't trust, is the role of third-party companies, right? So when Dominion said they would come in and answer the question, this was an opportunity for them to demonstrate who they were, the services they were providing, the products that they were uh, selling us, and how they were being utilized, and give the voters the confidence that they're looking for. Unfortunately, they're um, rescinding their, their acceptance of participation in our committee hearing, robbed our voters of that information. Dominion, questions that we had, did Dominion play a role in the tabulation of the votes cast? We don't know. And was it the same in all the counties? We don't know. Did Dominion program the software in the equipment that was used at the 12 counties? We don't know. It's what we're hearing they're doing in other states, but are they doing it here? We don't know. Was there direct county oversight? Was there expertise in that oversight? You could put anybody to oversee it, but if you don't know how it, how it operates or why it operates, is that oversight? Were test runs done, conducted before the election? Were they done after the election? How do we know? Does Dominion use open source software so that observers can go in and they can see exactly what switches are being turned on and turned off? We don't know. Transparency is key, so if they're doing this, if they used open source software, right, we would know what's going on there. The average observer could take a look to see what that process is. Moreover, how tightly controlled is the source code and who has control of that source code for all the Dominion software that's being used in every single one of these counties? Is it the state? Is it Dominion? Is it the county? We need to know these answers. So we handled, uh, we know that we handled um, just a handful of of companies, actually, I'm sorry, handful of companies have the corner of this market. I think there's only like four or five in the entire country that provide election equipment and software. We need to know exactly how this is being operated. Having an open source is one of the ways to do that. Blind trust uh, is not something that we can do when software is programmed and operating has to be explained. Blind trust is just simply not acceptable. To say we're disappointed by Dominion's last minute cancellation is an understatement. We have a duty as those constitutionally charged with the facilitations of elections in the state and it's imperative that we demonstrate that our electoral process and our system was fair was free and was equitable. And unfortunately, without having these questions answered, we can't give voters the confidence that they're looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. The issues and accusations could have been professionally addressed this morning. Pennsylvanians could have been put at ease, but we walk away more skeptical. With that, I'll take any questions. Yes. So, number one, our process is to fact find. We wanted to fact find. Part of this hearing was to fact find, to bring Dominion in and address all those concerns that are out there. We want, we want answers. She just elevated them. Can I want to, if SISA has said. Me, okay, allow me, to, allow me to mention that SISA has a board that oversees elections and, and these vendors. Dominion has somebody that sits on that board. Did they participate? in those hearings, in those conversations? Were they part of that? So, I mean, I think there's a little bit of a conflict of interest, and I, it's my understanding that each of these software and hardware companies have people that sit on this board. So, to, and, and as you ask, uh, what do you have to say, because CISA says it was most fair, what proof do they have, without having performed the audits of everything, to say that it was the most free and fair 
and secure elections ever performed. What evidence did they provide? I haven't seen any. Y'all were here months ago talking about SISA standards for safety of people in this pandemic, and now SISA isn't good enough. It just does not make sense. Standards. I, standards. Than an audit. Right. So today we were supposed to sit down with Dominion and have an open forum discussion on all those issues. Whether they're true or not, let's have the discussion and knock them down to provide accuracy to our voters. They walked away from the table. There was no reason to do that. They're not being litigated. There's no lawsuit against Dominion that's currently filed. If we as a standing committee, if we as legislators that are duly elected to do oversight of state government, particularly of this election, how are we to do that if everybody wants to, that we want to have to ask questions to says, sorry, we can't come before you because we might get litigated. We are not going to get any answers or address any concerns. This needs to put, we're putting a stop to this right now. If you're not litigated and we ask you to come before us, we expect you to, to fulfill your promise of coming to, before us and address the questions that people have. It's not going to change the outcome, but we need to know what happened. Dominion was part of that. There are broad accusations. I didn't say they were true. I didn't validate any of those accusations. We wanted to give them the opportunity to address them. They chose not to. Why? That is what we want to know. So have you talked it to just Chairman adds, Taylor? It adds more skeptical issues with our constituents moving forward. We just tried to have an open discussion. That was the point of the hearing, Steve. So have you talked to Chairman Taylor about subpoenas? You have subpoena power? Are subpoenas you going to use are a tool of the legislative body. They're effective in providing oversight. And that is as far as we're going to discuss subpoenas. Any other questions? No further questions. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, hopefully Dominion will be responding to this with concrete uh, answers to every single accusation that's been out there. Thank you.